Hey, about my legs. It's quite possible that I'll never walk again. The doctor just told me. Huh? You mean, you're gonna be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life? Probably. He said there's a high chance my legs will never recover. Of course, I'm gonna work hard at physical therapy, but... Oh, and one more thing. He said I may not be able to have children anymore, either. Wow, I see. Do they know when you'll be released from the hospital? He said I'll be in here for at least two months. Ugh. If only I had been paying more attention to the road, this might not have happened. And I heard the driver of the other vehicle died. I'm filled with all this sadness and anger at the same time, and there's nothing I can do about it. I feel bad for the other driver's Emily, but when I look at my legs... I can imagine what you must be going through. But you survived the crash, so I'm happy. Thanks. I've been thinking about something. How about you and I move into that big house your dad left to you when he died? There's lots of rooms for a wheelchair. If we do some renovations, we can make the house wheelchair friendly. It'll be perfect for us to live in. I told you that we can't live in that house. It was a stipulation in my dad's will. He didn't want me to ever live there. He just wanted me to maintain the place. You mentioned this before. And I told you, living there isn't an option. You and I can look for a new house if you want. But we'll have to wait till I get out of the hospital. Huh? After getting a house given to you for free? The location is great, and the place is huge. Why do we have to live in this tiny apartment when you have a big, beautiful house just sitting there? I've always wanted to live in a house like that. Let's at least try it for a little while. We can't. Just forget about that house, okay? I don't want to talk about this again right now. I have to focus 100% on my rehabilitation. Let's consider the possibility of moving after I get out of the hospital. Hey, Caleb! Mrs. Smith just messaged me and asked if we had moved. What's going on? Oh, has news already reached you? What do you mean, has news reached me? Don't tell me you moved into that house! Well, to tell the truth, yes. We'd be crazy not to. You've got a house with no rent and it's already paid for. We'd be crazy not to move into it. I told you, that's not a house we can live in. <sighs> I thought I hid the keys. Did you go snooping around our apartment to find them? Yeah, it took quite a while, too. But I found them tucked away at the back of one of the drawers. I can't believe you put that much thought into trying to hide them from me. <laughs> I tried to hide them from you so something like this wouldn't happen. Please, you've got to get out of there. Why are you saying it like it's an emergency or something? This place has got a nice backyard and the living room is huge. It'd be a crime to waste a place like this. <laughs> Caleb, please, you can't stay in that house. If you've already moved out of the apartment, I guess there's not much we can do, but uh, just take some things to go stay at your mom's house, okay? I can't. My mom's moving here with us. What? What are you talking about? My mom's living here too. I felt bad for her. She was gonna be living in that tiny place while her son's living in this giant house. Don't worry. This place is huge. You'll never even notice she's here. I think I'm just going to call the police. You two are trespassing. Hey, hey, hey. 
You don't have to go that far. Why are you being like this? This isn't the woman I married. Why are you acting like this? Wait, don't tell me. You weren't planning on selling this place and keeping all the money for yourself, were you? What are you talking about? I didn't know you were so greedy. You already got your dad's inheritance. You're gonna be getting insurance money from this accident. And you were planning on selling this house too? Were you planning on keeping everything for yourself? You know we're married, right? You must have hit your head in that crash, too. What do you mean, keeping everything for myself? Yeah, I got the inheritance from my dad. But instead of spending that money, we invested it for our retirement. And don't think for a second that I ever wanted to have a car accident like this. I'm in a wheelchair. I can't walk anymore. Do you think I wanted this? And I never planned on selling that house anyway. And even if I did, why would you think I'd be keeping the money for myself? Look, I talked to my mom about everything, and... I think I want to divorce you. Huh? Well, you told me you likely can't have any kids now, right? You know I like kids. I want to have kids of my own in the future. But I can't do that with you now. That's a justifiable reason to get divorced, don't you think? Wait, hold on. I don't know how to say this. Especially with everything that's happened to you with the accident, too. But I've put up with enough already, haven't I? I mean, your dad worked in real estate, but he never helped us get a place, did he? He had no trouble with money, yet he never helped us out financially at all. And even you, making us pinch every penny all the time and save any extra money we have at the end of the month. I can't stand it. Why did you assume my dad would just give us money? Our bills have nothing to do with him. And we were getting by just fine on our own. See? This is exactly what I'm talking about. There's no reason why we couldn't splurge a little more every month. All you ever wanted to do was to get by. What do you mean? We had everything we needed. What else did you want us to spend our money on each month? Ever since my dad died, you've been talking about money a lot. I'm the type of guy who likes to go out a lot and have nice things. So, when I divorce you, I want this house. You can't live here anyway, so you don't have a problem with that, right? Huh? I want this place. It's like my dream home. It's huge! And I've already moved in, so don't say, huh, to me. You should be congratulating me on moving into my new house. Even my mom thinks this house is amazing. There's a bedroom at the other end of the house she's gonna use. She won't even be in the way. This place has an upstairs and a fully renovated basement. That's three whole floors! A person in a wheelchair like you doesn't need a house with so many stairs. <laughs> Whatever. There's something I feel I should tell you, even though part of me doesn't want to anymore. That was my dad's house, but I've never lived there. What? You've never lived here? Why not? Didn't you grow up here? You're kidding, right? No. My dad bought that house, but he never lived there either. What are you talking about? This place was kept really clean. And this place was fully furnished. That's why I sold most of the furniture we had before I moved. We maintained it and made sure it got cleaned every few months. But no one in my family ever lived there. Do you want to know why? We had a psychic come in, and they advised us never to live there. 
They said the place is cursed. That place has a dark history. A guy killed a bunch of people in that house. Are you serious? People were killed in here? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> you think I'm gonna fall for something like that? <laughs> Lol. This place is spotless. Nothing bad ever happened here. And I haven't felt uncomfortable here or anything. The whole place was remodeled in an attempt to get it sold. Check online if you don't believe me. That address is famous. Oh, it is here. I see the story about the... incident. But... so what? Just because people lost their lives here doesn't mean no one can live here anymore, right? Of course that's right. Usually, that would be right. But that house is different. When my dad first told me about that place, I didn't believe him either. But everyone who has ever lived in that house has either gone crazy or started to go crazy. What you need to know about that house isn't just the murders. It wasn't after the murders that strange things started happening. It was long before that. The guy who killed those people in that house. It wasn't a home invasion or anything like that. The guy who killed those people lived there. It was his house. People said when he moved in, he was the nicest guy ever. But his demeanor started to change as the weeks went by. Then one night, he invited some friends over for a party. Everyone was drinking, and he told them they could spend the night. And then, while they were sleeping, he... Well, you can read about it. It's no secret. People say he was driven crazy by the curse on the house. Nobody would buy the house after that. It was on the market for so long. My dad wasn't rich. He bought that house because it was dirt cheap, and he didn't believe in the curse. He thought he could sell it for a lot of money if he held onto it long enough that people forgot. My dad remodeled the house, but couldn't get anyone to buy it. He even tried renting it out, but nobody stayed more than a month or two. That's when he decided to have a psychic come in. They told him there was something evil there, and to never move into the house himself. We kept it maintained, hoping we could do something with it someday. But my dad died before we could figure out what to do with it. Well, then, what the heck am I supposed to do? Well, you could start by believing me. I find what you're saying pretty hard to believe. Curses don't exist. There's nothing evil living here. <laughs> you make it sound like the plot of a book or something. But this is real life, so there's no way. You're just trying to scare me. Caleb, you've always hated scary stories, haven't you? That's why I never told you before. I don't know if I buy this. According to this website, that incident took place more than 20 years ago. I'm not going to let anything like that bother me. There must be something wrong with you if you believe in curses, psychics, and all that mumbo-jumbo. Why would you go in and clean the place all the time if you believed what the psychic said? I think there's something wrong with your head. <laughs> Oh, is that so? Well, as long as I can get rid of that house, I don't care what you think. If you want it, you can have it. There, it's settled. I'll give you the house and your divorce. That's everything you want, isn't it? Yeah. If there turns out to be anything wrong with this house, I can always just sell it. <laughs> I'm glad you're such an understanding wife. I'm looking forward to the start of my new life. And I wish you the best of luck on yours, too. Jenny. Please, 
Message me back. My mom's acting really strange. Jenny, please. Jenny! Are you there? I thought I told you not to message me anymore. I know the day I signed the divorce papers, you brought a new woman into your house to live with you. And I don't mean your mom. You were cheating on me while we were married, weren't you? I can't believe you. You're horrible. No, that's not true. I just happened to meet her the day we got divorced. Regardless, I don't want to talk to you. That's why I blocked your number the first time, and I'll do it again. So don't bother buying yet another new cell phone and contacting me with that number either. I'll call the cops if you do. Don't do that. I had no choice. You blocked me, and I had to talk to you. Just be thankful that's all I did. Look, I'm really sorry. I apologize for everything I've done so far. I'll do anything. I'll even pay you alimony or whatever if you want me to. So, please, help me. Everything's happening just like you said it would. Handle it yourself. Curses don't exist, remember? You're not going to let anything like that bother you. That's what I thought, but... That house isn't right. There's something wrong with it. Isn't that what I told you in the first place? That place is evil. <laughs> ah, but you decided to live there anyway, didn't you? I've already left that place. My girlfriend left too. She said my mom was way too creepy. Wait. So you left your mom alone in that house? For a few days now. You really are a horrible person, aren't you? Then again, the last time I saw her, she called me a useless sack of crap because I can't walk and I'm infertile. So I probably shouldn't care what happens to her. Please, Jenny, I'll do anything. Tell me what I should do. I've already hired a couple people I found online who said they could bless the place and remove the curse. But they both charged me so much money, and nothing they did had any effect. That's because most people advertising that kind of service online are frauds. Then tell me who I should get. And I can't even find any real estate agency willing to list this place. I have no idea what's going to happen. Properties like that are famous amongst the real estate agencies in the city. That's why my dad held on to the place for so long. He couldn't do anything with it. He was great at what he did, but even he couldn't get anyone to buy that place from him. Yet, you decided to live there, so you better take good care of it. Jenny, please. If we don't do anything about this... I think something's gonna happen to me next. You know, don't you? You've probably heard all the stories of what happened to the different people living there. Do you not see that I'm begging you for help? Why won't you do anything? There's gotta be something wrong with you! Yeah, you're right. There's gotta be something wrong with me. What can I say? I guess I'm just that kind of woman, huh? Jenny, I'm begging you. Do something! Jenny! I've just got one thing to say to you. Congratulations on your new house! You got everything you wanted from me. After that... Caleb's mom's mental state got progressively worse. I even heard from a mutual friend that she was eventually admitted to a mental hospital. I'm not related to her anymore, so I can't say I really care too much about it. It did make me a little scared, so I went and found Caleb to talk to him. 
When I say scared, I mean I was scared that he might actually find a buyer for the house. I didn't want anything bad happening to anyone else. Also, at that time, it was just a rumor that she was admitted to a mental hospital, so I wanted to find out for sure. Just when I spoke to Caleb and he confirmed that it was true, I convinced Caleb not to sell the house and to just keep it even though he wouldn't be living there. That was also the day I signed the house over to him and had it put in his name. I had to do that because it was part of our divorce agreement. The house would be his. He agreed to keep the place clean and maintained because he was worried that if he didn't, the curse may follow him. In the meantime, he would search around for a legitimate person who could maybe break the curse. If such a person even exists. However, I heard shortly after that that his new girlfriend left him and that he had been missing a lot of work because of it. I guess he was really upset by it. It sounded like he was going to get fired from his job soon because of it. When I asked him about it, he told me that it was the house's curse and that it had latched onto him even though he wasn't living there anymore. Personally, I think those things were all caused by his own actions. I never thought my dad's final wish would turn out like this. But then again, I got to find out what Caleb was really like and what he really cared about. And getting a person like that out of my life was the best thing for me. Without him around, I was able to focus on my physical therapy and get my life back on track. In fact, just the other day, my doctor asked me out on a date. As the saying goes, when one door closes, another opens. One other shocking or maybe supernatural thing happened too. The day after I had that house put into Caleb's name instead of mine, I started to get some feeling back in my legs. When I first had the accident, the doctors thought I may never walk again. Now they're convinced I'll be able to make a full recovery. I'm sure this is all just a big coincidence, but... Then again...